Hey folks, Michael McGee here. You saw me fill this completely to the brim with wild hog hams and shoulders. Now I've got to rinse that salt off and get it in the smokehouse. We've got it a little bit of a rainy day. It's not bad, but it's wet. So I gotta get in here. I gotta wash that off, get it done, get it in the smokehouse. I'm gonna run out of hooks again. So I'm gonna have to use Baylor twine to hang up a large portion of these. I don't know how many hooks I need because when people give me a lot of wild hogs, I start running out. But that's not a problem. I've used Baylor twine in the past. It works great. And now it's time to start pulling out these wild hog hams. As you can see, they're filled up to the brim. Kind of knock off some salt. Throw it on here. <clears throat> Literally filled from top to bottom. And since we were pulling these things out of the water we were washing them on and throwing them in, there's a lot of water in my salt now, as you can see, it turned into a brine. That's not a problem. Brines are perfectly fine. There's lots of brine recipes. This one here just happened naturally. And you see, we've got different sizes. This one here, this is a big boy. This came off the bigger, bigger sow. It's not huge by any means, but it's definitely the biggest pig that came in that bunch.
can. A few shoulders, I don't know how many I threw in there. Frank was not nice enough to help me. So basically when you're doing wild hog ham, it's just a matter of getting it off the bone as quickly and easily as possible in as big of a chunk as you can. And then it makes the dicing process go easier. So in this next time lapse video, you're gonna see it in very quick time. That way it's easy to watch and you'll be able to see exactly how we dice it up because we want our pieces to be fairly uniform when we can in the jars to have a pretty much consistent. And then when you dump it in with your beans or your yamazetti or your whatever you're putting it in, it goes really good with mashed potatoes by the way. Then you've got a consistency that you, when you're eating it, you're not getting one big huge chunk one minute and a little tiny flake the next. So let's get in it and let's do it. fill these jars up. We got a little over 48 pounds of meat here. It don't really look like it, but what that salt does is draw water out. So this here is a very dense, compact pile of meat. There's not a lot of excess fluff. That muscle weighs more. So that's why we have so many pounds. It's hard to believe that is almost 50 pounds of meat. Miss Grace and Mr. McGee are gonna start filling jars. is smiling, I'm going to put sugar in. I'll give you one guess of why she's smiling. Mr. Lucas is smiling. I think it's because if we let them put the sugar in, they would put two or three in each. I would never. You would never. <laughs> I would, would never, never my foot. <laughs> it was almost 50 pounds. We weighed it. That was amazing, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. All meat that was free and was causing problems. So, Mr. Pete Gunther, he cured the problem by trapping the pigs and gave the meat to us. And now we get to put it in jars and have it. How long do you think 24 quarts will last, Mom? It all depends on how well they like it and everything I dare to put it in. Well, we've tried it on two dishes mm -hmm. and they liked it. I would say we could probably go through about a quarter week at least. Mm. Ooh, yay! All right, now we're gonna put water in. I'm not exactly sure how easy the water will go down with this meat, but we're about to find out. If it uh, starts to be an issue, I can take something. All right, if the water don't wanna go down, you have to go in like this and let the bubbles out. Just kinda do a little sideways pull. And that's the way it works. And once we get all these done, then we'll be able to put the lids and the rings and all that good stuff on it.
just in your tube. Folks, we got our can. This thing right here is the biggest canner I've personally ever laid my eyes on. And there are literally 19 quart jars of meat in here. I can't even believe it myself. So we're gonna take this lid off and see. Oh, look at that. There's nothing like brand new stuff, I tell you. So they're still warm, they haven't cool off when they cool off they will seal down they'll suck that lid down that may be too hot to grab by hand for now ah you were thinking ahead i'll let you i'll let you do good okay so let's see how they look they look exactly like the ones that i canned last month and brought over here so that looks good so whether or not they all seal that's something time will tell by taking them out of here, that speeds up that process a little bit without causing any problems. Did you hear that? <laughs> that was one ceiling. <laughs> was that that one? No, no. I don't think so. I think it's so one did, down in yeah. that one right there. Yep. So anyway, wild pork ham, salt it for three days, smoked for about four days. You can hear them, they're stealing like everything. And what's the name of these lids? These are the superb lids. Superb lids. They've got a lot of thick gasket. I don't know if they're better. My wife thinks that they're inferior because she thinks that the the um, actual rubber is softer, so it it sinks down into the jar so that you can't use it a second time. But I would say probably for the first time it may be superior. But my wife likes to use everything as many times as possible. <laughs> so do I, so I'm not going to be very happy if I can't reuse these. Oh, man. That's a lot of meat in one canner. One thing I can say about this, this canner came up to pressure fast. We have a 14-quart one in my house, and it don't come up to pressure as quick. But maybe this right here needs to be lubricated with olive oil or something that that could be the problem maybe we didn't do that but anyway this is looking great that's a pretty color light color ain't it mm -hmm. it's, it's not beautiful. all it's not all the same dark but some of it is front shoulder some of it's hind quarter but at this point it's all ham yes and it all went in the same jar yep that's a pile of meat out of that one canner. Yes, it is. I'm excited now. I've we, used it the first time now. Yes. <laughs> we also have a seven quart canner over there that's just finishing up. So that'll be also, yeah, right there. So that'll be also added to this to make 26, did you say? Yes, 26 quarts. 26 quarts. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'll say a big thank you to Pete Gunther. He's a pig trapper. If we ever have pigs take over this area, I'll have to become a pig trapper. But right now we don't have them in this area and I, for one, am grateful. So, so that's how to do it, folks. A lot of you live in wild hog areas. 
this is what you do. If you don't have room in your freezer or you want to even try this recipe, just see how it tastes. It has a completely different flavor since it is cured and smoked and you can use it in dishes just immediately. It's, you could eat it straight out of these jars. It's ready to go. It's like having a grocery store in your own house. Try it and see what you think about it and let me know in the comments what you, how it goes because not everything goes the same way for me as it goes for you. But that's all we got for you now. We hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.